second monument way later in history that we're going to see now is the Notre Dame Cathedral uh, that stands right in the middle of the city on the Ile de la Cité, which is actually the cradle of Paris, where the first city had been described by Julius Caesar uh, when he uh, came over and conquered Paris in 57 BC. Uh, and uh, this uh, building is one of the earliest Gothic buildings in Europe, which is not surprising since Gothic was actually born here. It was born slightly north of Paris in 1143, 20 years earlier exactly, uh, when the abbot Suger uh, decided to rebuild the uh, Basilic of St. Denis with a new style, the Gothic style. Uh, so uh, the Gothic style we're going to talk about, the Gothic style was in fact uh, mostly an engineering uh, revolution before being an artistic and aesthetic um, revolution. Uh, the Gothic vaults made of peat arches and ribbed vaults were actually replacing former Romanesque vaults that were actually uh, barrel vaults with a major uh, difference between both. When Romanesque vaults were pushing to the sides because of, because of the round structure of uh, the barrel vault, Gothic vaults being um, peaked, uh, made of peat arches, uh, are pushing to the bottom, uh, which uh, allows building way higher churches and open way bigger windows so as to bring a maximum of light in uh, the modern Gothic cathedrals of the 1100s, Notre Dame being one of them. Uh, from the southern part of the southern side of the facade, you can appreciate the evolution of that construction with the choir, the oldest part started in 1143 and the rest of the cathedral being progressive built westward until the facade was over in 1250. This is quite a usual situation in ancient churches here. They always started building their cathedrals or churches with the choir since the construction of the whole building would take over a century and sometimes even more. The result was that after building the choir, they could build a temporary wall, close it from the outside and use it as a temporary church as they were finishing the rest of the construction. So the different periods are visible here from 1163, the choir, uh, from 1163 to 1190, roughly, the choir that was finished. Uh, then the transept from uh, 1190 uh, to 1200, uh, the, the, the transept and the rest of the nave. And then from 1210, roughly, uh, to 1250, uh, the facade until the two bell towers uh, were completed. When this first version of Notre Dame was completed, it was already outdated because another uh, church had ju just been erected on the same island, bringing way more light in than previous constructions. That was the Saint Chapelle that we're going to talk about just after. So after 1250, they started rebuilding some parts of Notre Dame, starting with the transept walls, including the big rows you can see from here. The purpose being, as you can guess, to bring a maximum of light here through the stained glasses uh, that were a major ornaments for uh, that period. This is a close view of uh, the early choir of 1163, enshrined in a set of flying buttresses that were actually reconstructed after 1250, between 1250 and 1350. You can appreciate the difference in stone color uh, and in carving between the original part of the 1163 and the extension of around uh, 1300 uh, that constitute the flying buttresses. Something else which is visible from here and interesting is the fact that uh, every single flying buttress is also a gutter on top of it stands a gutter that allows um, expelling the water from the roof uh, to the outside of uh, the, the top roof, I mean, to the uh, outside of the cathedral. The Western facade is one of the most uh, typical views of Paris today. It is what we call the harmonic facade. It's typical of this early Gothic period with a symbol, particularly visible, uh, and a, a, a set of proportions 
a very meaningful one. You have the gold number, which is the proportion between the width and heights of uh, the cathedral, including the tower. And you have a cathedral that can be actually divided into three. If you forget about the two top towers, you will see that thanks to the uh, central set of arches, uh, the bottom part of the facade can be seen as a square. A square divided into three slices, uh, in terms of weight and in terms of height. Uh, three slices, three times three, three is a very important number uh, in Christianism. It consists, uh, it's an, um, it, it represents Trinity, the Holy Trinity, the definition of uh, God. So three times the Trinity, three by three, allows moving, uh, allows the believer uh, to move from the square that is the general shape of the bottom part of the facade, which is the symbol in in uh, Middle Ages of Earth, uh, the creation of God from Earth to the central round point, the circle with the central rose, the, 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 the circle, which is the symbol of uh, heaven, heaven being infinite and absolutely perfect, uh, being the utmost creation of God, obviously. So it has a message, a spiritual message, uh, that consists in uh, showing the way from earth to heaven uh, in uh, this church. An impressive set of 28 uh, kings of Judy are also visible from uh, above uh, the, um, the, the arches, the porches. Uh, they, they are actually the human ancestors uh, of Christ on his mother's side, uh, the Middle Ages having invented some kind of story around the origins of Mary and making her the descendant uh, of uh, the kings of Judy, uh, which uh, helped fulfilling the uh, uh, the forecast that the descendants of the kings of the, the, the kings of Judy would come back to reign over Judy, and that would be in the shape of uh, Christ. But this is not obviously uh, historically proven. Uh, those portals are uh, important features of the cathedral, but also important landmarks in uh, European history, in European history of sculpture. Uh, the first one to the left, which is uh, marked, which is uh, signaled uh, compared to the other two with a, a peak uh, a peak angle uh, above, is dedicated to Virgin Mary, to the function of Virgin Mary, considering that Notre Dame is obviously dedicated to Our Lady, that is Virgin Mary. And the portal is an illustration of the, um, uh, the way Virgin Mary illustrates the transition from Ancient Testament to New Testament, as she's the shrine for the word of God, it's in her womb that Jesus was born. So you have the bottom of this, um, of this uh, tympan, uh, the six, well, uh, three, six characters around the Arch of Alliance, uh, three uh, Jewish priests to the left, three Jewish kings to the right, uh, on both sides of uh, the uh, old, old Arch of Alliance, the Arch of Alliance that has re been replaced with the birth of Jesus with a new Arch of Alliance, the body of Mary where uh, that was the shrine of God's word in the shape of Jesus. And that's what you see above with the body of Mary after her death, laying on a bed and her son Jesus actually showing the womb of her mother where he, the word of God was uh, born. And on the very top, you have the scene of Jesus crowning Virgin Mary, his mother, queen of heaven after her death in uh, paradise. So probably one of the most important portals of uh, Gothic art in France, at least. The next one in the center is an illustration of what uh, the cathedral and like uh, what religion is about, uh, preparing the human soul for the last judgment. And it's a vivid image of the last judgment that medieval sculptors have translated into stone here with the uh, resurrection of the dead getting out of their tombs. That's what you have at the bottom. Uh, Saint Michael uh, judging, waving, weighing their souls in uh, his scale just above with the just, the, the fair souls taken to paradise to the left and uh, the bad ones uh, taken by, uh, um, by a devil to, uh, to hell uh, on the right hand side. 
uh, under the judgment of Christ himself, surrounded with the elements of his passion, with the instruments of his passion. Uh, it is worth mentioning at this stage that all these uh, Gothic, um, all these Gothic sculptures have reached us in a condition that has nothing to do with their original condition. They were indeed originally entirely painted, painted with vivid and realistic colors uh, that uh, made them a lot more appealing and a lot more illustrative uh, than they can be uh, today. The last and not least portal on this facade is the one to the south, dedicated this time to Virgin Mary, of course, but with underneath uh, the history of her mother, Saint Anne. And what's visible here is a difference in style uh, when you look at the two levels dedicated to uh, St. Anne's history. Uh, uh, a difference in style between the bottom uh, range and uh, the range above. It is due to the fact that the rather recent sculptures from the 1100s, around 1150, the one at the bottom, were reused uh, later in, uh, this, um, in this portal, uh, which also dates back to the end of the 1100s. So this portal is actually the oldest in uh, the uh, whole cathedral. The other two, if we go back, you can see this being of a more, more modern conception with more lively characters, whereas those of the 1100s were a little bit more uh, stiff uh, and of a different style. Inside the cathedral, the nave uh, was among the most impressive back then with 33 meters high. It is also a very impressive building because it's constituted not of one, not of two, but of five naves, one central nave uh, with two side naves on the side. And on top of this central nave stands, or stood, shall I say, because it's no longer the case today, the roof of Notre Dame. Uh, the roof that used to be among the oldest roofs uh, in Paris that had survived ever since the 12th 50s, between the 1220s and the 1250s, with probably uh, beams that dated back to a way earlier period. Since wood is something precious back then, uh, it is um, probable that uh, many older beams had been reused, so specialists think that some of them actually date back to, dated back to the uh, 800s or 900s. None of them are visible anymore today after the fire of uh, 2019, uh, but this is obviously an earlier uh, view of uh, the roof that shows something fundamental, as you can appreciate from uh, the left part of the picture. The roof did not stand on the vaults, but exclusively uh, on the side walls, and that was to be a problem during the fire. We will talk about it. Seen from the side, this is what the roof looked like, a totally independent structure from the vault, again, with no contact except on the side walls. This is precisely what was to be a problem in 2090, uh, when a fire uh, started during renovation works, probably due to an electric shortcut. There isn't, unfortunately, enough left uh, of the roof to, to be absolutely certain of that, but it's uh, unfortunately not uh, the only, not the first time that we have that kind of an accident in a historical monument where they bring electricity, torches, uh, whatever devices that did not exist in the 1100s and that represent a certain uh, danger for an old, very dry, uh, very easy to burn uh, wooden structure. The result was that by crawling over the vaults, the, um, the, the, the roof that was until then totally independent pushed on the vaults and uh, made them crawl actually. So the, the vault of Notre Dame in its pre present condition shows three major vaults where uh, the uh, where actually the um, the weight of uh, the burning um, the weight of the burning roof has uh, has made these um, big holes right inside the cathedral we still have uh, all the artworks and that is something quite impressive the miracle of the 2019 fire none of the artworks inside has been destroyed all of them have been well, slightly damaged or at least darkened by smoke, so they will require a certain level of cleaning. 